Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some popular fitness or nutrition idea, look at where that idea got started, and then figure out whether it's true or false based on the most recent scientific evidence. So this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that HIIT, or high intensity interval training, is better for fat loss than low intensity steady state cardio or LIS. So HIIT is when you do short but very high effort sprints, and they don't actually have to be sprints, as in actually running, but just a high intensity bout with whatever form of cardio you're doing. And those high intensity bursts are interspersed with lower intensity steady state work in between intervals. So an example of a HIIT session would be something like, let's say you're on the bike, you do a five minute warm up, then 20 seconds all out, and then go at a light pace for two minutes, and then repeat that again for say five or six intervals. And on the other hand, low intensity steady state, or LIS, would be like just walking on the treadmill at a constant incline, just at a steady pace the whole way through without any bursts of max exertion. And while for a long time it was held that low intensity steady state was in fact the better option for fat loss, uh, mostly because it tends to use more fat as fuel during the cardio session itself, which is true, uh, high intensity exercise tends to utilize more carbohydrate for fuel than fat for fuel. Uh, but like we discussed in the fasted cardio video, um, what really matters isn't what substrate you're burning during the cardio session itself, uh, but what happens to fat balance over a 24 hour period. And so popular opinion has recently shifted away from the sort of steady state cardio camp and two interval training uh, being better for fat loss under the assumption that while you may not burn as much fat during the cardio session itself, uh, you will burn more fat after the session has ended. And this is a popular concept and it's known as the calorie afterburn effect or more precisely the EPOC or post-exercise oxygen consumption effect. Uh, so basically if you utilize a high intensity during your cardio session, you'll burn more fat uh, in the hours following the training session due to increased oxygen consumption. Uh, so so when you're back just laying on the couch after your cardio session is over, your body continues to ramp up fat burning uh, while you're just sitting there basically. Whereas with steady state cardio, you really only get the caloric burn that you get from the session itself. And so you totally just miss out on that sort of post-exercise epoch component. And while this afterburn effect definitely is real and it definitely is supported by many lines of scientific evidence, I think its practical relevance is somewhat overblown. In a research review of a 2006 study on EPOC, Lyle McDonald highlights research showing that when subjects performed high intensity cardio for 80 minutes, the EPOC effect lasted for seven hours after training. However, it only amounted to about 80 extra calories burned, which draws into question which is going to contribute more to fat loss, the 700 or 80 800 calories burned during the exercise bout itself or the 80 calories burned afterwards. And of course, 80 minutes is a lot of cardio. I think most people are doing at most uh, probably half that. Um, so according to this research, uh, you'd probably be looking at something in the ballpark of about 40 extra calories burned because of the epoch effect. And more recent literature has underplayed this even more. One 2017 systematic review and meta-analysis looking at 28 studies concluded that overall, it appears that epoch is unlikely to account for any apparent greater fat loss potential with HIIT. So in my opinion, I think the real bonus to HIIT is that it does tend to be more time efficient than steady state cardio. In 2017, Weiji and colleagues found that across 13 studies, there were no significant differences between HIIT and moderate intensity continuous training for any body composition measure, but HIIT required approximately 40% less training time commitment. Um, so I think on the face of it, this really does look like a home run for HIIT. Uh, you get the same fat loss with nearly half the time investment. Um, I would point out, however, that this analysis was looking at obese and overweight subjects without dietary control. Um, so I would argue that a potential reason why high intensity interval training appears to be so much more time efficient could be due to First of all, its impact on reducing appetite, uh, meaning the subjects in the HIIT group could have just been consuming less calories, and the fact that people tend to feel like they're working harder when doing interval training, uh, which may lead them to just push themselves harder in other areas of their exercise routine, um, and sort of just believe in the process more, or believe in their efforts more. And so while these points would technically count as bonuses or as points uh, for HIIT under more uncontrolled, say ad libitum conditions, 
Uh, I think that if these extraneous factors were controlled for, uh, especially in healthy, non-obese subjects, uh, you'd see that difference in time efficiency start to go away. And when you actually do out the math, doing 30 minutes of interval training, uh, as we've described the intervals here, uh, and 30 minutes of steady state cardio, uh, they should both burn roughly the same number of calories. And as Lyle McDonald pointed out in his literature review, uh, the interval workout is alternating between very high caloric expenditures and very low expenditures, such that the average expenditure still ends up coming out about the same. And again, since the influence of epoch is likely to be very small, even if you do factor epoch in here, I think that in reality, you're looking at more similar caloric burns between between these two modalities uh, for the same time investment than a lot of people probably realize. Uh, but for all that, I still think that people do tend to push themselves harder with HIIT uh, in the real world, and it does tend to be a little bit more time efficient and just not probably uh, as exaggeratedly so as a lot of people seem to believe. Um, so in addition to this sort of time efficiency edge, which again depends on just how low your low intensity cardio is, I think that high intensity interval training also just tends to be less boring, which I think can make it much easier to adhere to in the real world. However, I think a potential strike against HIIT is that it does tend to be more difficult to recover from, especially if you're combining it with weight training, as many of us do. And we need to remember that we're not only trying to lose fat, but also trying to retain as much muscle as possible in the process. And as Dr. Eric Helms put it in a March 2013 issue of Alan Aragon's research review, HIIT is by definition high intensity, which means it provides a high level of stress, and that stress has to be recovered from. Um, so in addition to generally just being more taxing, uh, interval training may also be somewhat redundant if you're doing regular weight training. Uh, because if you think about it, weight training does tend to resemble high intensity interval training in a lot of ways. Um, so if you just imagine going in for a normal uh, weight training session, you probably do an all out very high intensity bout uh, with weights for say 20 or 30 seconds. Then you'd rest for two or three minutes between your sets and then just repeat that for the duration of your workout. So it could be argued that if you're just weight training at a sufficient intensity, then you could be getting all or at least most of the positive adaptations seen with HI IT just from your resistance training alone. So to conclude, I'd like to point out that perhaps this HIIT versus LIS question isn't even the right question to be asking. And again, I'm gonna borrow from Dr. Eric Helms' sentiments here, where he said, cardio should not be the primary vehicle for fat loss, regardless of whether you're performing HIT or LIS. Truly, the vast majority of fat loss should come from diet. Uh, so in terms of practical application, there are a few benefits to HIIT. First, it's more time efficient although probably not by as much as you think. Uh, it may blunt appetite a bit better. Uh, it may actually get you working a bit harder and it tends to be less boring, which may improve adherence. Uh, but then there are also drawbacks uh, it tends to be harder to recover from, meaning you can't do them nearly as often as list sessions if you need to. And they may also hurt your weight training strength and performance, may put you at an increased risk of injury, and it could be redundant if you're already regularly weight training. Um, so practically speaking, I think the best recommendation is just to pick a method of cardio that works best for you. Personally, when in a fat loss phase, I like to use a combination of HIT and LIS, uh, but I'll rarely let my HIT sessions exceed one to two per week. And when I do do them, uh, I try to make sure that they're done on a piece of equipment that tends to be less impact. Uh, so something like the bike or the elliptical machine rather than doing actual sprints on say the treadmill uh, or somewhere else. Um, but ultimately I think that this really comes down to individual differences and preferences and assuming you're recovering adequately from your weight training routine, I would say to pick whatever cardio modality is going to allow you to fit it best into your schedule, allow you to adhere to it best, and to allow you to basically fit it into your weight training routine in a way that sort of minimizes their interference. So all things considered, I would say that the idea that HIIT is better for fat loss is kind of busted. Uh, based on the literature we have, HIIT may have a slight edge just based on time efficiency, although I wouldn't say this is quite as much of an advantage as it's often made out to be. And again, they do come at a recovery cost. And just as one final takeaway here, uh, if you do decide to do HIIT, uh, try to limit those sessions to at most one to two times per week. And if you are going to do them, try to space them out uh, as much as possible from your your leg days. Um, so if you're doing legs one day, try not to do interval training the next day. Um, try to have at least one day of recovery between those. And I try to fill in the rest of your caloric deficit uh, through reductions in food intake and through doing list sessions as needed to fill in that 
caloric deficit that you need to keep losing fat. Okay, so guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. Uh, I hope that you really liked it. If you guys are ever looking for ways to sort of support me and the content that I'm making over here, uh, I have a bunch of ways that you can do that linked in the description box below. Uh, basically, it comes down to using the things that my sponsors have to offer. Uh, one thing in particular that I think you guys will really benefit from is the mass research review. Uh, it's something that I'm reading every single month and I'll pull from it for almost all of these videos. Uh, I find it to be really helpful in terms of just condensing all the science that's out there down to what you really need to know in terms of practical application. Um, so if you haven't ever checked that out, uh, it is linked down there in the description. I'd recommend at least giving it a, a read through and see if it's something you think you might be interested in. Um, once again, guys, just wanna say thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you happen to be new. And I will see you guys all here next Monday.